Hey guys, it's Joe the Android Guy. Have you ever wondered why it's so difficult to transfer a file or really any information from one phone to another using NFC? Well, I've got the answer to that question along with some history of another transport mechanism you may or may not remember. Let's go take a look. Let's spend a few minutes talking about the history of transfer stuff, shall we? Back in the days before Bluetooth, and Bluetooth really is a, well, a halfway decent transport mechanism, but way back when, we had something called IRDA. That was infrared something something. Basically, it was like a remote control. See that little guy right there? You had a little sensor and a little transmitter that shot infrared light and, well, you could control your TV with it, which was fun. Not really. But, you know, hey, we, we could. And, and that was cool and, and made us geeks. But you could also transfer stuff from one device to another device by beaming it. Beaming. That's what they called it. Just line up your device with that other device, hit the beam, and, you know, after five minutes, your JPEG that was really low quality already was transferred over to the other device. Woohoo! Okay, so for transfers of pictures and music files, it was painful, literally painful. Halfway through, most of the time, the transport would fail. You'd have to start all over again. After three or four times, you'd just give up. But that's okay because only like eight of us had any MP3s on our devices back then anyway. So, no biggie. And, you know, there were no cameras on the devices back then anyway, so, eh, no biggie. We could always email them to each other and then wait until we got back home so we could dock our phones and send them through our desktop email clients, because that's what we did back then. Yes, kids. Back when I... Oh, wow. Did I just do that? I'm old. But infrared was kind of a standard. It was really good for transporting, say, business cards. I love doing that. I could beam you my business card just by pointing my phone at you and hitting beam and it was relatively small. So it took, you know, 10-15 seconds, but I could transport all of my contact information into your device immediately. And it was so cool as long as you were using a device running the same operating system that I was. Since I was running Windows CE, that meant almost nobody because everyone else was running Palm. There were some apps that helped bridge the gap, but most of the time, the other person also had to have the Palm equivalent of that app. Luckily, there was one, and I don't even remember the name. If you do, put that down in the comments, that, well, it let you translate everything. With apologies to Gene Roddenberry, it was the universal translator. I could send it to a Newton. I could send it to a, a Palm device, all from my Windows CE PDA, because the, the app was smart enough to say, aha, I know what format to send that in. Wasn't quite smart enough to you know, figure out what kind of device it was sending it to and do it all automatically for you, but hey, at least you could do it, right? And, and I could and I did. At least four times I did that in real life. In retrospect, that was probably an awful lot of effort wasted. But, but, fast forward to today. Today we have NFC and it lives right back here in the back of our phones, in the back of our tablets, and it's making the world a better place for everyone all over the... Okay, it's not. And why isn't it? Well, NFC is near-field communication, so there's its first limitation. It's near. You've got to literally have something like that close, if not touching, to be able to get it to work. You've seen my uh, neat little videos where we showed off cool things you could do with NFC, and for everybody who sent in their little tips and tricks of what they're doing with NFC, thank you so much. Those are so cool, but it's all device to something. If I don't wanna buy tags, what can I do? Well, I did buy a whole bunch of tags, and honestly, after I did those videos, you know how many tags I've burnt? None. Sorry. It's just not that cool once you get past it. As soon as it becomes more ubiquitous and less of a, I'm a geek and I can do this because I can, it'll be great. But where NFC really can shine is, here's one device, and there's another device around here somewhere. Here's one device. They both have an NFC in them, and I can tap them together and do stuff. Well, what can I do? 
This is an Android device. This is an Android device. They both have, a, have NSC, and they're both running a, a the same version of the operating system. You know, Jelly Bean. So it's great. Everything works fine. I can take a YouTube clip and say, here, send it over there. But I'm not sending the YouTube clip. What I'm doing is I'm opening the, opening the YouTube app and I'm sending that link or that reference over to this other device. This other device says, oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. And it opens and plays it. Great. Well, if I want to send a, a business card and I have a special app that I've built that in, I can do that. I can, I can send that over. But I'm limited, very, very limited on how much data I can send. In fact, like we just talked about, I'm not sending the data from my phone, you know, my YouTube data, to my tablet. What I'm doing is I'm sending a, a reference. Okay, so what does that have to do with anything? Let's say I want to send a picture. Well, I can do the same thing. This to this, bink, great, works. Except it's not going over NFC. It's going over Bluetooth, or it could be going over Wi-Fi Direct, or it could be going over some other transport medium. All the NFC is doing is it's starting the process. It's saying, hey, this guy wants to transfer something to you, and it's this type of thing, and here's how I want to do it. And this says, oh, okay, I know how to do that. Go ahead. Ta-da! It works, and it's magic, and it's wonderful. As long as you're the same OS. What if you've got something that's not the same OS? Even let's go back from jelly bean to ice cream sandwich. Does it work? Not all of it, because there's new stuff that was introduced in jelly bean that makes NFC transfers better, faster, quicker, more helpful. So if you're going back to ice cream sandwich, you're not going to be able to do that, or not going to be able to do it as easily as you would with jelly bean. But that's still Android to Android. What about Android to Newton? A little geek humor there because Newton doesn't exist anymore. Moment of silence for Newton. But anyway, Nokia still exists. For a while anyway. So what if I want to send something from my Android running Jelly Bean to my Nokia running Windows Phone? Can I do that? Nope. Not gonna work. Why? because they don't understand each other. It's NFC, they should, and this is saying, hey, I've got this stuff I want to send to you, and this says, I hear your words, but I have no idea what you're saying, dude. No idea at all. And it doesn't let that work because the transport layer isn't initialized. It's not started and it's not gonna work until we get everybody to work together. Now, what's gonna happen? What's it gonna take to make this happen? Unfortunately, the big player out there, Apple, they don't have NFC yet, maybe soon, hopefully. Well, then everything's going to break because they're going to do it their own way. And that means it's different than every other way out there. But that does mean that they are going to push because there's like 18 gazillion Apple devices out there, none of which have NFC. But the ones that will everybody's going to try and be interoperable with those, and that's kind of, I predict, going to push an interoperability standard that's not really a standard. It's more of just an ad hoc little, let's get everything to work if we can. And we probably will, and it'll be great. It's not the way we should go about doing things, but it's the way we're probably going to have to. Once we do that, however, transferring files, you know, transferring cool stuff back and forth, it's going to be a lot easier. And isn't technology all about making things easier? So let me know what stories you have about using NFC in good ways or in bad ways, success stories or failures. Let us know down in the comments. We all want to know, what did you do to overcome those? Did you revert back to the old, I'll just email you an attachment? Or did you do something more creative? Let us know down in the comments. NFC still has a future and not just as a credit card, but as something that can really open it up. We'll see more of that with the, the Nexus Q when it comes out and the NFC stuff that you can do with it. That'll be fun. For Pocket Now, musing about NFC, interoperability, and infrared of old, I'm Joe Levi.